Hello again everyone and welcome to Question Below the channel or Ole or however you want to call me and this is another episode of Streamer Insight. Alright, so today uh, we shall be discussing something a little bit more specific with regards to Lior on board commands. I have been asked in one of the previous videos how can you do a reaction to a chat command but only from a specific user. So if anybody else does that command Nothing happens. Well, let's go right into that. So here I have my Lioran board designer in my Lioran board receiver. And yeah, let's just go ahead and create a blank button. Let's call it um, Ole command because I will be targeting my user. Create. And now if I go to edit or add commands. So let us start with just which chat message and there is a very nice helper over here which is called type the search and you can start typing out the name of the action instead of just having to scroll through all of them so i will start typing chat and there we go which chat message click and now it's the action that was selected so I have a message over here Hey, nice to see you again. Okay, channel name, your channel. Questionable Ola for me, because that's my nickname in Twitch. I stream every Wednesday and Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Sundays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so that's basically it. I, I've done the button. Uh, there is my button, we can go into the Lioran board stream deck, open it up, see this button over here, and uh, if I go and switch over here for a while, you can see there is my chat, and so I, let's say, pull my Lioran board stream deck over here so it's visible, and click the button, and you can see that that's happening. Hey, nice to see you again. All right. So the text is happening. Let's go back and edit our button some more. Now I want to instruct this button to actually react to my user. So how do we do that? Well, we need to go to add which triggers and add a chat message. Case sensitive? No. Adding the message, we don't want case sensitive, we don't want anything here and we want to specify the command. And let's say I want to say exclamation mark hi. At this point, I can kind of done done over here and now the command is live if I go to my chat and type in you know hi then it will listen and reply back excellent but it replies to everyone now how do we know which user typed the, the, the chat message and then how do we compare if this is the user we want to react to or we don't this is where it gets techy but it's totally within the control of Leon board to do so. Let me show you how. Go back to our scene, go back to our button, and now we need to go in and edit some more commands. I need to add a new action and then put it up before the chat message. Chat message will be our last action, but something needs to happen before that, which is called math trigger pool. This is something which is very powerful and very adaptable and it reacts differently or gets different values from different types of situations. What I mean by that is that your button could be triggered by a text message, like we are doing right now. Your button could be triggered by a channel points redemption, right? Your button could be triggered by a raid. Um, it's all different actions which have different associated information about those actions. For example, if it's a chat message, who was the user who did the message, right? If it was the redemption, maybe who was the user of the redemption and also did they specify any um, text information with that redemption. This math trigger pool can actually reach out and get the information you want. So in our particular case, we know that our button will be triggered by a chat command, right? So, 
this is where it gets a little bit tricky because there is some fields which we need to fill and we don't know how. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Remember where you have gone and downloaded Live on Board from? OBS project, forums, tools, resources, right? In this page, Leoran has a bunch of useful links, and one of them is button commands help. Open it up, and it gives you a list of all the actions which are available for us inside the buttons and their descriptions. So if I go and search for trigger pull, click on it, and there we go. This is used a combination with any triggers, in our case, the chat message trigger. So first of all, in the field of variable, we'll say, okay, well, this value will be pulled, whatever the value I want to pull, but how, what, where, what do we do with that, with that knowledge? So we put that knowledge into a variable, my variable, doesn't matter, it can be like hail Satan or anything we want, right? As long as you will be able to reference that same text later, to actually get the value from. And now, in the pool value, if it was a chat message trigger, we are only interested in zero here, display name of the person. So if I put zero over here, the display name of that person will be stored in the my variable variable. Okay? Turn to real, false. Turn to real is basically put it into a number format instead of text format. We don't want to do that. And uh, I have like arrows over here where I can push and pull actions eventually. So what happens now, if I click done and I click done here as well, and I go back to my chat and click, not click, a type hi, it also, you know, replies because I haven't yet done anything with that knowledge, it's just in my variable. And to demonstrate that it is actually in my variable, remember the tab button? We can click tab if you are in this menu, and you will see my variable, which is the name which I've given, having the value of questionable only, which is my user. Okay, so now we can think, aha, uh -huh, so can I compare the value of my variable to just some kind of text, because you know who you want to grant access to, so you know the handle of the user to which you want to grant this privilege of being able to do a command, right? So that's basically it. You need to go back to your button, and now we need to add one last step, which is a comparison step. Again, we need to add a new action. And here I need to type compare. So the best approach is to use the first one, which is skip if and let's see how it looks like. First of all, it's my variable. What do we do? We compare it to a string. So if it's not equals to questionable, you need to skip one step. And up. Okay. This is the end result. And let me walk you through it real close, real slowly, uh, so we all understand. First step we pull the value of whoever triggered the command into a variable. My variable. Easy. Now, inside my variable, we have questionable only. Second step we compare. If that variable does not equal questionable only, if somebody else has triggered it, if somebody else has triggered it, it will not be questionable only. Thereby, this skip will actually happen, and this action will be skipped, because there won't be a match over here. And so this action will be skipped by anyone who is not questionable only. And if it is questionable only, this action will be executed. So there will be a response back to me. Just to demonstrate, 
Let me say questionable Ole not. Save this. Save that. Go back. And now when I type exclamation mark high, nothing should happen. I don't get the response because my handle is not questionable Ole not. My handle is questionable Ole. Just. Okay? So if we go back real quick, command center, edit, and just switch this from <laughs> questionable Ole not to my proper handle questionable Ole. Done. Done. Go back. Type high again. There we go, there is the response. So this way that button will be triggered by anyone in chat typing high, but the actual response action will only happen if the username matches questionable OLE. And that's how you can craft unique commands like bonuses, like rewards for your loyal subscribers or like whomever you want to give like a custom dedicated command to and it will only react to them. How cool is that? I think that's pretty cool. So this was another tutorial from Streamer Insight, Leon Board, Techniques by yours truly, Questionable Ole. I do stream on Wednesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and also on Sundays, 10 a.m. Stop by. I don't really do much on my streams other than gaming and maybe some painting as well, but I am always, regardless of what I'm doing, happy to answer your board related questions. Thank you so much. And I'll be seeing you soon. Bye.